before we get started, I wanted to go over the new format I have. I'm going to stop showing the inside of each cookbook. I'm a little afraid of getting copy striked on them. I do believe me showing just the pictures is fine for fair use, but I just don't want to run to that situation. Also showing that I cook these recipes can make you guys see my experience and what I learned through the cookbook. If you guys enjoy this new format, I really liked doing it and it was a lot more fun than just taking photos of the cookbook and putting in a video. Thanks and on to the review. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing The Walk by Kenji Lopez Alt. You've probably heard of Kenji Lopez Alt by now if you go on my channel. He's one of my favorite cookbook authors and one of my favorite YouTubers on cooking. He's really knowledgeable in a lot of subjects. He sees cooking more as a science than an art. I like to think of cooking as you need science to have a good baseline and then everything above that is art and creativity. His book The Food Lab was a great book on learning basic skills and bringing yourself up to be a better home chef. It really dealt with a lot of American food like fried food, lunch, vegetables, steaks, burgers. There wasn't many recipes outside of the Western American influences. Kenji Lopez all being half Japanese, he tends to be doing a lot of Asian American recipes, Chinese, Japanese, Korean. They show up on his YouTube channel and recently he's been focusing more on Asian American recipes in his YouTube and this was in preparation for this walk cookbook. I've been really anticipating this cookbook. I know he's mentioned it before multiple times that he was working on this book and it took him a long time to make this book. You can definitely tell because there's so much content in this book. It's the equivalent of the food lab, but for Asian recipes. I know that this is probably the most anticipated cookbook of the year, so let's dive in. Before this book came out, I actually bought a wok in preparation for this. If you want to know which wok I got, I'll post a link below. I got an Amazon and it's a carbon steel wok. All I have to say is make sure you get a flat bottom wok. I accidentally ordered the round wok and that's not going to work in conventional home kitchens. Any wok will do, but just make sure it's carbon steel. This book has a lot of depth and knowledge in recipes and wok preparation how to cook in a wok, what recipes you can try out like stir fries, stirred noodles, fried rice, frying things in a wok. It really does have a heavy focus on Chinese, Cantonese, Eastern Asian food. There's recipes about Thai food, Korean food, Japanese food. The main focus of this book is how to cook in a wok. The beginning goes through important ingredients like soy sauces, vinegars, and other ingredients you might need. It breaks them down into essential, intermediate, and advanced. Essential means you need these ingredients to cook to advance where it's very optional. He also gives brand recommendations and if you need to order them online or you can find them at a typical Chinese grocery store. I find this really useful because there's a lot of ingredients that I don't really know. So I grew up in a region of Texas that didn't have the largest Asian influence. I don't know anything like black vinegar, which I just found out, which is really delicious, or what kind of soy sauces there are. I really thought there was just one soy sauce, but there's light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, sweet soy sauce. There's a lot of different varieties out there. I think a few issues I have with this though is sometimes it doesn't go in depth enough. Like for Szechuan peppercorns, I know there's green or red Szechuan peppercorns. There's not really any info on this in the ingredients section, but later on in one of the recipes, it goes over the differences between red and green. I kind of wish you would give a preference on which ones are better because I read red peppercorns are a little bit better for common recipes but really I think he should have included that description on when he introduces Szechuan peppercorns. He goes through how to season a wok. I think this could be expanded more because I tried seasoning my wok and I ran into a lot of problems. I tried watching everything on YouTube. I think the biggest issue is I didn't have a hot enough burner. Seasoning a wok can be a little tricky. You might mess up and get caked on oil, which is what I had. So a lot of black bits are kind of coming in my food. It tastes fine though, it's just kind of annoying. He goes over a quick detail on how to use a blowtorch to season a wok, which is a great idea, but I wish he kind of showed how to do it. He glances over it. Also, I've never figured out if I need to season the bottom of a wok. No one ever says it. I wish he just said yeah you just need to season the bottom but i never read that anywhere i still tried to season it but i think it would be useful if someone just said it this book can be kind of daunting. You'll hit a recipe that has a new technique in it. This is actually kind of interesting because as you go throughout the book, it kind of builds up techniques and how to cut up certain ingredients for stir fry or how to prepare certain ingredients like velveting chicken or velveting beef or cutting ginger. This book, you really have to read from start to end. You can't just jump around because stuff builds on from previous lessons. Every recipe comes with a really long description in the beginning, maybe some context on the recipe, and then kind of Kenji's description of that specific recipe and why he likes it, what techniques you would need to use for it, or maybe the origin of the recipe or why it's very popular. I think this is really cool. I always think a good cookbook teaches you about the dish, why it's made, the reasons for doing something specific for that dish, the origins of the dish, and different variations. I'm not a big fan of when a cookbook just gives you a recipe and expects you to cook it and not give any context behind it. It never feels like I learned too much when I just get a straight up recipe. I appreciate Kenji's writing, but it can be very long and kind of all over the place. He does stick in some humor throughout the book, which I find very funny. 
I think I really like Kenji's writing because it's not boring. Kenji knows how to write a recipe very well where you want to keep reading and you don't get very bored by it. There can be some books that are very boring on the recipes and get too into the nitty gritty. Kenji can convey his message very well. Kenji has a range of recipes, mainly stir fries, but he does go over some that don't require the wok like Oyakodon. I thought the Oyakodon recipe was decent. It was a bit bland compared to other recipes I've tried. I really like the recipe from Japanese soul cooking. I think that one tends to have a bit more flavor. I think because it has just more soy sauce. The recipe in the wok book is a little bit bland because it has much less soy sauce. I just tend to like things that are a lot saltier and more flavorful. The Oyakodon is a subset of recipes that don't use a wok, but they probably could have. I've made Oyakodon in my wok before when I had to cook for eight people and it worked perfectly. I don't see why he didn't try cooking in the wok. It wasn't really a good reason. One thing I noted that during the Brussels sprout recipe, he never kind of makes any notes saying that be very careful when you put the Brussels sprouts in because they pop a lot. I only knew this because the other day I was watching a YouTube video on how to deep fry Brussels sprouts and that was like the first thing that I said. I was just kind of surprised he didn't mention it because if you didn't know about it and you plop the Brussels sprouts in, you could get hurt. I really like how the techniques flow in this book, but it can be confusing trying to page through which one since they're kind of all over the place. But this I'm really conflicted on because I like the flow of the cookbook and how you learn new techniques, but also it might have been handy to have all the techniques in just one place at the end. That way, if I want to search up a specific technique, I don't need to flock through all the recipes, I could just see them all together. There's so much I also learned in this book. There's a whole section on shrimp and how to properly prepare it and certain names and how to buy shrimp. Kenji really goes in depth on how to find good shrimp. It'll change your perspective on shopping once you go to the grocery store with everything he gives you. It's like kind of going on the internet and searching for how to cook shrimp and you have to research multiple hours to figure out the best shrimp. Kenji consolidates it down into three pages that has everything you need. I think what I appreciate the most about this book is Kenji gives you general rules on how to cook something. The section on cooking vegetables in a wok is useful because he just gives you rules on how to cook vegetables, breaking each step down, and then you can take those rules and apply it to any vegetable. He really wants you to get creative with how you cook something. He's just giving you the basics and he wants you to expand on that, which is something I really appreciate in a cookbook. It's not just telling you how to do everything step by step, it's telling you how to do something step by step and it wants you to think outside the box. Is this cookbook as essential as the food lab? I don't think so. Is it as fun as the food lab? I think it is more fun than the food lab and I really, really enjoyed this book. I think my two major issues for this book is one, that is too broad on topics and two, it's a bit kind of sloppy. What I mean by it's too broad, there are books that are more specific to your region. Sichuan food and Every Grain of Rice are really great books about Chinese cooking and they're very specific. I'm pretty sure Kenji took a lot of recipes and ideas from those books. The wok book can be good and bad because it gives you a lot of information that's useful, that's straight to the point, but it doesn't go much further than that. It's a good introduction book to East Asian cooking, kind of like how the Food Lab was a good introduction book to home cooking. But if you want to get into more specific cultures dishes, you should probably dig deeper into different cooking books. What's handy is Kenji put a bunch of cookbooks that he referenced to in the back of the book. So he categorized them by the cuisines, so Korean or Japanese, and then he included a bunch of books that he's read. So if you're curious more about a culture's cuisine, you can look up one of these books and read more about it. My second issue is the sloppiness. There's just kind of information all over the place. Recipes are just kind of put in different categories, but not with really any rhyme or reason. It's not the worst, but it can be kind of daunting trying to navigate this book. Besides those two issues, this is definitely one of my top cookbooks that I've read. I'm giving this book a 9 out of 10.